Something that I find myself doing while playing an old game that I loved as a child. Seeing a video or a speedrun of a forgotten gem. Or just reminiscing over the times that I played certain games with family and friends. I think, I wish that they would make games like this now. And I know I'm not alone in thinking this. It would be awesome if there was a game that had the same type of gameplay or style, a spiritual successor, back to basics, really you would take anything at this point. And then there are a few of us who are inclined to think, what if I made that game? What if I tried to make a spiritual successor? Personally, I've been there. I've thought about how cool a modern version of some of these games would be, or how some games in a particular series got better and better and then just kind of stopped. This process of thinking is something that I did for my current game, Omnigear, where I was inspired by a certain game and thought, what if I try to make something like that? Except that's not the entire story. Hey, my name is Charles McGregor. I'm the founder and sole developer at Tribe Games. And as I mentioned, I found myself in this situation with my current game, but the game wasn't the only inspiration that I had. In fact, there were a ton of different things that inspired me to go down the path that I'm currently right now. It actually started where a lot of indie games get their start nowadays, a game jam. Back in April, I was working on a port for my last game, Hyperdot, an action arcade game where you dodge everything. But I could tell that I was feeling a bit burnt out. I've been working on this game for five years. And as much as I love the game, I'm really itching to start my next big project. And it was at this time, I happened to stumble across a tweet by my friend Ben Burns, who runs the OST jam. The OST Jam is a low risk game jam where you create a game inspired by a track created in the two hour album challenge, where the community made a bunch of songs in two hours around a theme. This go around, the theme was vintage. I've been meaning to join this jam for a while, but I haven't participated in the game jam in over four years. The last jam that I participated in was back in 2018 during the global game jam. That is where I made my game Distant Transmission, a cooperative puzzle platformer. But I was intrigued enough to click on the jam and then check out some songs. And then I heard this. The song is called Vintage by Milo. I immediately thought of when I was playing games like Gran Turismo on the PS1, trying to tune my car for the next trial. I was probably spurred on to think about this because I recently discovered a game called Racing Lagoon a racing RPG that recently just had an English fan translation done. But it also has customization at the forefront, which as a quick aside has an awesome soundtrack that I highly recommend that you listen to. Then I remembered a game that's all about customization that I loved as a child, Custom Robo. Custom Robo is an action brawler where you build robots and battle it out in virtual arenas. There are a plethora of different combinations, playstyles, and arenas that can provide a ton of fun. It's something that I really got into as a kid, and I love playing multiplayer with my brother. We would go in and explore all the different options that we had unlocked, and try to come up with fun combinations and parts that really synergize together. Admittedly, it's not the easiest thing to parse when you first get dropped into it, but the fun of finally creating a combination of parts that finally break through your opponent's defenses feels great, and I wanted to somehow capture that. One additional reason why I wanted to work on this is because I wanted to get some more experience with certain systems for my next big game that I'm planning for Tribe Games. I actually talk about this method in my GDC talk, shameless plug, where you use smaller games to work on your skills to develop bigger games. The jam was over the course of 18 days, which is the longest jam that I've ever participated in. So I tried to pace myself. Though looking back, it was a pretty slow start even at that reduced pace. I didn't really implement anything for about two days. But what I did do was a lot of theory in trying to figure out all the different parts of the game. I tried to figure out what I wanted to emphasize from all the games that inspired me like Custom Robo, Armored Core, Gran Turismo. I knew right away that I wanted to have a way to customize the various parts on your robot. Knowing that, I started to think about what were those parts and how they changed your robot. In the end, I came up with five different parts that you can change on your robot. The head, the body, the arms, the legs, and an accessory. The head changes the player stats like damage, health, etc. The body gives you your defensive move and special attack. In fact, the special attacks were actually inspired by the moves in Power Stone. The arms were your primary form of attack, and the accessory was your secondary, and the legs affected how you jump. 
I figured this would be enough to change up the playstyle, especially without me needing to make a ton of different parts because you can mix and match different combinations. And it's easier to keep track of from a player's perspective because there's only five parts rather than nine or ten. So I got to work. I started working on the player controller first, just getting the basic movement in. Then I moved on to the different parts. I really was trying not to get in my own head where I normally say, oh I need to make this code pristine. I just wanted to get a prototype done with the basics in. Jumping, shooting, blocking. I tried to get all the different aspects of the character in. Then it was time to make a level in which the players actually battled on. And then finally I made a quick menu that players can choose parts from. And it was at that point I had a somewhat working game. I was stoked but I was also overwhelmed with all the different things that I needed to do in order to complete the game. When I find myself stuck on what to prioritize or what to do next, I ask myself the question, can I release right now, like literally this moment? Obviously I would give a guttural no, but then I'd start listing all the things that I would need to do before I felt comfortable releasing. This helps cut to the chase and actually identify the things that I really want done for the game. So doing this exercise I started to prioritize the things that needed to be finished before the game jam was done. I figured I needed to work on the game's feel because in early playtests that was one of the main points of critique. People didn't understand that they were taking hits or doing damage, and I thought that that was pretty important to get done before the end of the jam. Hence why the characters looked like 2D flat shapes. Getting the game to feel better and give you feedback seemed like a better use of my time than to make new art. I also had to admit that I indulged in making slick menus because I really do find enjoyment in doing that, but it didn't take that long. But in the end, I was able to finish the game on time and I'm super proud of what I was able to make in the time allotted. It was a nice change of pace from working on Hyperdot and I was really thinking, what if I worked on this some more? So I started asking myself what I like and dislike about the game. Like I mentioned in my video on game pillars, I've been focusing on the pillars modernized PS1 and expression and playstyle. This is because after I finished the jam, those things really spoke to me and gave me inspiration on parts, modes, art style, etc. It gave me guidance. Doing this jam also reinvigorated my motivation to get work done. I was ambitious to get all the things that I wanted in the game, but knowing from past experiences like Hyperdot, I tried hedging my bets and keeping my scope down, but more importantly, scalable. By scalable, I mean after I finish the minimum viable product, I can put in as much or as little content as I want and then be done where I don't feel obligated to get a ton of features in before I can be feature complete. Keeping scope in check can be tricky no matter how you slice it, but it can be even more tricky when starting from inspiration from another game. I want to live up to the other game. What about living up to other people's expectations of that game? I don't want to just be a clone, I want to actually add value to that idea. It's tough, I struggle with this as well, but remember that sometimes those games were made with large teams or over the course of many years. Depending on your timeline for your game, it isn't realistic to try and get all the different features that your game's inspiration has. So focus in on what you really like and what you want to expand on. So for example, in the case of Custom Robo, there's a full campaign with dialogue and cutscenes. This isn't something that I want to focus on in Omnigear. I want to explore the core gameplay style, so I don't plan on making a story campaign. Avoiding a ton of work on environments, dialogue, cutscenes, etc. Instead, I want to make challenges or standalone missions that don't need context for a story in order for you to play. Something more arcadey. Funny enough, this is kinda how Hyperdot is also structured, where I was inspired by modes like in Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe or Jamestown, where you had bonus modes that you were trying to complete. But for Omnigear, I want to have these be more substantial and things that you're encouraged to play multiple times. I was extremely excited to work on all the different ideas I had, but like I said before, this time I was trying to temper my expectations on how elaborate the game was going to be. This game is ultimately a stopgap between Hyperdot and my next big solo game that I want to make. So I've been scoping accordingly, not trying to blow it out of proportion, make it more complicated than it needs to be, or do too much work before I feel like I'm feature complete. My goal was to finish in a year's time, and then I proceeded to be extremely busy. Both work work on totally reliable delivery service and working on the ports for Hyperdot are eating a ton of my time. The ports in particular take up most of my Omni Gear dev time. That's because I'm trying to manage my business, port to a relatively new platform, the PS5, and I'm adding new stuff to Hyperdot. This is the opposite of how I started working on Omni Gear. I basically stopped working on Hyperdot during the jam. Both because I was a bit burnt out, but also I knew that this was only for a short, limited time. So I needed to change my time commitments to Omnigear, or else I wouldn't really be satisfied with the end result. That's why I decided to take the game a bit more seriously than I have. 
I wanted to give it a proper release rather than the, oh yeah, I'll eventually get to it treatment that it had for the last few months. It's part of the reason why I wanted to start these videos, because I wanted to have more accountability than I have been. And so far, it's helped. Now I have guaranteed time when I work on Omnigear, in addition to all those spare moments that I have in between different projects that I'm working on. I've enjoyed streaming the development of the game as well as showing off behind the scenes, which typically includes me rambling about things. But I've really enjoyed getting into some theory crafting, whether it be on the new moving platforms and how players interact with them, or what role does energy have in my game, or am I just adding it in just to add it? Lots of questions that I am enjoying exploring and trying to figure out what's best for the game. There's still a ton of stuff that I have to do. There's working on enemy AI, actually getting an art style in with 3D art and VFX, even eventually reworking the menu design and UI. Then there's the scarier thing that I want to get done, online play. You know, the thing that people say that is way harder than you think and you already think it's way hard. Fortunately, I have a bit more experience with that because of all the different projects that I have worked on over the years, but it's still personally a really intimidating feature to add. But I originally set out to do this because I wanted to learn more about it for my next big game. There are even more things that I want to add in. Just getting the footage from Custom Robo for this video, I'm inspired to explore more varied stage designs that I think I can get more bang for my buck without having to do too much more work. And hopefully, by the end of this process, I'll be proud of the answer to the original question that I posed at the beginning of this video in regards to making a game from inspiration of another. What if I made that game? Thanks for watching. I'm hoping that in sharing my game development journey, it helps shed light on some of the different ways to approach game development, <laughs> that you don't need to know exactly what you're doing and you can explore and learn. Also in the future to be able to go back to these devlogs to see where it started and how far it's come. I also had to delay this video because I'm still trying to settle into the new place I'm at. But let me know what you think in the comments and if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. Again, I'm planning on doing more devlogs, video essays, and more development live streams on this channel. And with that, thanks again for watching.